answer uh, as a first step to any, any conflict, whether be it in a family conflict or whether it be a conflict of the communities or countries or such. So to be talking uh, and uh, trying to iron out these issues is always our best solution. And the Holy Quran and from the life of the Holy Prophet وسلم, who was obviously well uh, aware of what the issues in marriage can be and how these can be resorted, he has left for us an example uh, and uh, no critic can ever raise a finger as to his treatment of his wives. And that is the example that we aspire to. And that is what we should always look at is how he led his life and how he treated his wives despite the uh, Quranic injunctions that are present. So there is much more to deal with in terms of relationship between husband and wife than to say that if there is a conflict then the husband has uh, the right to beat his wife and that is never the case in Islam. Th many other steps have been given which have to be tried um, and um, efforts have to be made in that respect to make sure that this does not get to that point where some, uh, some uh, slight chastisement may have to be given at that stage. Just picking up on that point, if I may, Doc Sob, though, one of the things, and it's a criticism leveled, especially in the West, we've had discussions here about it as well, that you know, you've seen the emergence of Sharia courts. And again, in Sarah's question, there's an implication here that too often they're found to be biased and uh, sort of towards men. And indeed, she says, is there any recourse? What disciplinary action, for example, might a woman have at her disposal? Of course, Islam is quite explicit and does provide that avenue. It's unfortunate that it isn't applied in practice by some Muslim communities across the world, indeed, here in the UK as well. In fact, in our community, uh, what I find is that it is often the man, the husband, who comes to us and says that the Kazai is discriminating against him because uh, Islam has given so many rights to the woman for her protection. And uh, she obviously has recourse to all of these avenues. And he feels that woman has been given the upper hand in, in those negotiations. As you know, if, it go, if a marriage goes beyond the point of repair and has to break down, the, the wife has been given the right to preempt this step which obviously we find has come into the Western society in very recent years. Mm. So Islam has always looked after the rights of the woman in that respect and given her the prerogative to take uh, uh, things into her own hand in this respect. So she does have recourse to elements of, this, uh, of the administration in order to try to iron out these problems for her. Yep. Majib Saab, if, if I could come to you. That t too often we see this being portrayed perhaps or the perception is given that there is a re inherent bias and, uh, and prejudice against women and a bias towards men when it comes to such particular disputes and I think that's where Sarah is probably looking at uh, or her question from. Uh, talking of bias, I'm not inclined to deny that men may have some bias against women and women may have some bias against men but I'm not prepared to accept that God has bias against one sex or the other. God Almighty did not have any bias against women. So therefore, in Quranic teaching, there is no question of bias. Now, the lady who has put the question, she appears to me to be a very uh, spiritual-minded lady. She talks of prayer <coughs> for the reformation of husband and talks of all those moral things. Uh, it's so nice to hear such things in this society. Because prayer, ultimately, as she says, prayer is the last uh, answer to all our problems. But since we are dealing with a specific question, we cannot run away from the fact that in Quran, there is a verse which specifically mentions chastisement of women. Why is that? Now, for a believer in Quran, there may be no problem. But one who does not believe in Quran, there is a problem. But these, these, these problems and these questions, if I may say so to the lady, these questions are specific to the sensitivities of our age and our civilization. Mm -hmm. Quran is a book which addresses all mankind at all levels at all times. So there may be a human society at a level which is pre-civilization stage. 
where the sensitivities are not as fine as they are today, and where the beating or taking recourse to uh, 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 small violence may or may not be permissible according to the sensitivities of the society. Now, this particular verse also, I, I'll refer you back to this verse, and I will also take you back to the sayings of the Holy Prophet <laughs> sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Is it, is it a recommended thing for men to chastise women or to strike them? Certainly not. It is not recommended. It is exceptional permission. And exceptional permission at a level of society where the sensibilities of the spouses, they are going to be the same in a, in a, in a set of society. Because Quran raises man, as Hazrat Masih uh, Maudullah Salam has uh, stated in one of his lectures, raises man from animal state to the human being, human being to the moral being, moral being to the spiritual being. So there is a gradual progress, progression of the development of human personality. So there may be a society, there may be a stage where man is living at the animal state. In some bushes, even today, men live in the animal state. They don't even wear clothes. So these the directions of the Quran are meant for all the people, for all the stages of civilization, and they need not necessarily apply to our case with the uh, our civilization with the same rigor. But I will not rule out that this is not 